From Creation Ministries International, you're listening to Creation.com's article podcast. The research and insights that give God the glory, refutes evolution, and gives you the answers to defend your faith. I'm Joseph Darnell. The genealogy in Genesis 5 repeats the melancholy refrain, and he died. While the lifespans recorded are much longer than any person today experiences, the continuation of death is the emphasis. No one in the list makes it to 1,000 years old before succumbing to the curse of death, with one startling exception. Enoch, the great-grandfather of Noah, was born in the seventh generation from Adam, Genesis 5, 21 through 24. Like Noah, Enoch is said to have walked with God, Genesis 6, 9. The Septuagint elaborates what this means when it says he pleased God. The patriarchs of Israel are said to have walked before the Lord, Genesis 48, 15, as David also did, 1 Kings 3, 6. Walking with the Lord implies a righteous life and faith in God. Even though the Mosaic law had not been given, it would have been some sort of sacrificial system, see Genesis 4, 2 through 5, and some basic moral code. Scripture implies that Enoch lived in line with whatever revelation he had. We also know that he had faith because without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and rewards those who seek him. Hebrews 11:6. Enoch. The Man Who Walked With God Written by Lita Kosner Enoch's entry in the genealogy does not end in his death. Rather, Scripture says, And he was not, for God took him. While non-biblical writings speculate about what Enoch did to make him worthy of this, and how exactly God took him, Scripture does not satisfy our curiosity. However, we can say that Enoch was not special. He was a fallen son of Adam and Eve, just like all the other people who have ever lived and died. He sinned, and was in need of the salvation that would come through the promised offspring of the woman, Genesis 3.15 and Matthew 1.18-23. He did not make himself worthy of walking with God by being holy enough on his own. No human can do that. Rather, God was pleased to do something very unusual in Enoch's life for reasons that aren't entirely clear from this narrative on its own. When we look at the wider context of Scripture, however, perhaps God took Enoch to foreshadow the future defeat of death, to show that the statement, and he died, will not have the final say over the fate of the people of God. God remains sovereign over death, and we see a glimpse of things to come in Enoch. We see Enoch mentioned three times in the New Testament. He is included in the genealogy of Jesus in Luke 3, which affirms his historicity. The author of Hebrews says, By faith Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And Jude says, It was also about these that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his holy ones, to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of all their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Jude 14-15 this is one of the very few places where the Bible quotes information from a non-biblical source. Now, let's answer the question. Does the quotation of a source in Scripture make it Scripture? Some wonder whether Jude's quotation of the Book of Enoch authenticates it as Scripture. However, this is not the only time when Scripture quotes a non-biblical author. Paul quotes two Greek philosophers in his Areopagus address in Acts 17, and he certainly does not mean to canonize them into Scripture. Also, sometimes when a New Testament author quotes Scripture, 
He references specifically the Septuagint translation which is different from the Masoretic text. In these cases, the quote becomes part of Holy Scripture because it is now part of a biblical book, but the source it came from remains non-biblical. Enoch teaches us that salvation worked essentially the same way for everyone, even before the Mosaic Covenant. Trusting in God and believing in His revelation about Himself was always central. Enoch also points to the reality that death is not the natural order of things, and that God will one day put an end to it. Those who are in Christ are promised resurrection. Hey listeners, it's time to start shopping for gifts again. So did you know that we have an online store you should check out? I'm sure your loved ones and friends would enjoy something about creation that they can add to their home library. For example, here's something that I gave a loved one last year, the genealogy poster. This magnificent tree art poster shows the genealogical chart of the Old Testament, including the two lineages of Jesus back to Adam and the 12 tribes of Israel, successors to the throne of David, kings of Israel and Judah, the table of nations, a brief chronology from creation to Malachi, the change of human lifespan from Adam to Jacob, and the 12 stones in the breastplate of judgment recorded in Exodus 28. This poster is a wealth of information and a great overview of the Old Testament. If you're interested in the genealogy poster for someone on your Christmas list, you will find it and other great resources at creation.com slash store. For all of us at creation.com, thanks for listening.